Welcome everybody to the Tuesday, October 15th meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Would the clerk help me with the roll call, please? Sir, Chairman Harley. I am here. Vice Chairman Roberts. Here. Diane Allen is here. here. James Hughes. Not here. Mr. Oikel. Here. Here. Mr. Hammond. Mr. Homicki. Mr. Dean. Here. Here. Mr. Silver. Here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Nope. And Ms. Murphy. Here. <coughs> Thank you. So we have eight participants, and everybody can participate in the voting <coughs> action. So would uh, you like to proceed to number one? Open it up, item 3.1, uh, application 2023-19-Z. Stefan, Kara, and Flynn Crespo seeking a special permit in accordance with section 351-B4 <coughs> of the Weathersfield uh, Zoning Regulations using a trailer over 18 feet, 23, 23 feet in this case is at uh, 15 Crest Street. Would the applicant uh, join us at the microphone and introduce yourself and describe the situation and what you're applying for. Good evening. Uh, my name is Stephan Crespo and uh, we are looking for a conditional, well, I think it's conditional permit, um, special permit to keep our new camper that we picked up this season on the side of our home on our property. Um, I was not aware of the over 18 feet uh, standard or whatever you want to call it there to be able to keep it on our property. I wasn't aware of that. That's a shame on me. We probably should have checked on that beforehand, but we did check with our neighbors just as a, uh, just to be respectful uh, before we purchased it, uh, our direct neighbors. But, uh, it's a 23-foot uh, camper. Uh, it won't sit in the driveway. Uh, we have a stone pad on the side of the house where it's gonna where it's gonna sit. Uh, so it'll sort of be in between our house and our neighbors to the left of us. And I don't know if you all have documents there. We did print pictures so you could get an idea. So what we tried to do was um, take photos so that you could kind of see from every angle. Um, what the view would be and what, you know, someone would see the camper from. So sort of, you know, coming down the street from the front of the home, past the home, and then what our neighbors behind us would see uh, also. So you could kind of see the different angles there. And from most of the views, uh, you really can't see it if you're just coming down the street until you're pretty much in front of our house. Um, our direct neighbor to our, our left, um, is really the most affected, I would say, by it. And we actually spoke to her uh, before we purchased it, um, just to see if she would, you know, have any issues with it, which she she didn't, uh, and she doesn't. Um, but yeah, you can see it if you're, you know, if you're driving down and look directly over, you can see it when you're in front of the house. But anyway, um, I think that's it. We're just looking for for special use permit, if possible. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, commission, have any questions? You mentioned um, during seasons, when you take it away, I assume you can define those seasons for us, but when you take it away from your property, is it gone? Mm -hmm. Or does it come back and forth every weekend? Or? Oh, yeah, okay, no, so it's not a seasonal, I, um, if that's what you're asking, meaning it doesn't stay at a campground for the entire summer. If that's what you're, is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, no. So it, it's, it stays with us. Okay. Um, we bought it to travel, you know, okay. to different places, okay. not leave it at, okay. yeah. So no, it's, it's, it's at our home. Yeah. Unless we're out with it. For, for the record, there are two pieces of correspondence that have come into the town. <clears throat> uh, the first one is from uh, Carolyn Owen of 32 Belmont Street. Uh, this individual is opposed to granting a special permit. She goes on to indicate she's noticed commercial vehicles, wrecked vehicles, boats are being parked in driveways and otherwise attractive residential neighborhoods. Um, the storage needs of residents sh should not be allowed to negatively <coughs> impact their neighbors. So that's a negative. And another one from Judith Gillian whose address I have not been able to surmise from this, but again, it's opposed. Uh, have, I have lived in Weathersfield for 40 years, and uh, 
And I've never seen this many recreational vehicles. To kind of summarize what you say. Difficult to understand why residents um, I, I get, you know, seek these these special permits. So I think there's only the two. Only the two. Rich? When I drove by there over the weekend, this trailer was kind of like out in the driveway and there was another trailer behind there that looks like it's snowmobiles or something. Is that one also stored at the property? Or? It is, yeah. Okay. And the reason why the camper's in the driveway, we're, we're winterizing it, we're done with the season, so I'm putting antifreeze and stuff on it before we cover it up and you know, you kind of have to like do yeah. do some prevent, you know, some maintenance right. before you put it on the side of the house. So they will be switched actually, if you saw it. Uh, so the, the camper will be, as you see in the pictures beside the home, and then our snowmobile trailer, uh, which is much smaller, will be in front of it. That's the kind of the pink box with the X on it on the map. Yeah, board. that's. I, I I guess that came out in uh, in. The, I think that was a. Yeah. All right. I, it, I I guess it came out like it was a structure on there, but it's not a structure. Mm -hmm. It's a like a ten foot camper or uh, trailer. Yeah. So are you storing both of them then on the side of the house? Correct. And they sit on the side of the house, don't extend out one way or the other? No, you can see on the pictures there the way that I, oh, well, the, I'm sorry, the snowmobile trailer. I, I was there today. I oh, okay. Yeah. So the, the snowmobile trailer, w the camper trailer will be uh, flush with the front of the home. So that does not protrude, but the, the snowmobile trailer will be in front of that. Summit trailer will be say that again. No. Yeah, so the so the camper trailer will the be smaller one will be up front. Bigger, they help. Yeah, okay. So the so the larger trailer will be yeah. beside the home, kind of flush with the front. It won't stick out. Okay. Um, but the smaller snowmobile trailer will be in front of that in the driveway. Okay. Yeah. So you're uh, I thought of asking for two variances, but I'm not going to. No. No, the other one's short. And it it's it's a very one. small trailer. Oh, I know what it is. I saw it. No, seriously. So it's sort of small. Yeah, but it's out front. So even the smaller one is supposed to be parked in the rear yard? Um, oh, okay. So, in S so he's, he's asking for, um, so, so the rule is, um, as it's written in your regulations, the outside storage of one RV, one boat in its trailer, or one auto trailer, not more than 18 feet in length, uh, may only be parked in the rear yard by the residents when treated as an accessory structure in compliance with section 3.6, which is the accessory uh, building uh, section. So let me just read that. Uh, outside storage of a recreational vehicle, boat or trailer by the, rec by the resident <coughs> when not in compliance with the above. Uh, the outside storage of one RV, one boat, is trailer, and one owner patrol, not more. Yeah, so... Um, even the smaller one is supposed to be parked behind the house. Side. Yep. Right. No, behind. Um, behind. Behind the house. Behind. Yep. Behind. <coughs> Everything's behind um, the house. Now, and they both can sit. You said. Okay. They can. Um, how is it? What's the reason you can't put it in the backyard? So, I mean, you can, um, but I don't know if you know that our neighborhood very well we're at the bottom of crest um well you drove you said you went by there today so we're kind of at the bottom of that hill and the i would say from about well i can't tell you how far up the road but our direct neighbors there's there's a lot of issue with wet with the yards being very very wet down at the bottom of the hill so my yard um backs up to Kind of like a wash i don't want to call it a creek but you know it's a washout for water to you know everybody's yards oh, are supposed down, to be that's right that's right so um the back of the yard which is what we tried to fill in on the photo there we kind of marked in red and back is quite wet um for a good part of the season unless it really dries out uh, like right now it's it's dry so it's it would be okay now but um most and of the time it's that's right yeah, so it can. You didn't, you didn't want to put it out there. I mean, you didn't want to move it further back. Even, right? No, I don't. I, I mean, I, I would be worried about it getting stuck at some, some times of the season and, and getting all, you know, it's it's a heavy trailer. It's it's about six thousand pounds. So I, I'd, I'd be worried about 
pushing it through the yard uh, if it's really wet back there. So, um, do you have enough uh, of that gravel to accommodate both of them on the side? The gravel doesn't go all the way back to the. Uh, no, Pro I don't know. Well, I haven't tried it yet, but probably I not. Think you ought to consider that. Yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> Running stone back to my patio. You mean? Yeah. Did you walk? Were you on the property? You yeah, saw the. I yeah. Walked, okay. Looked up, down, around. Yeah. I didn't realize Crest was such a long street back then. Yeah. <laughs> I've been around the town for 50 years. But anyway. It goes, um, goes all the way to the end. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you have a nice yard. I, Thank you. In, in general, I want to say that about. We try to keep it nice. We don't try to, you know. Okay. And your neighbors do the same. Yeah. In general, but you Most of them. Very nice. Uh, would you put any, want to put any shrubs around it or feel you need to? So how does that neighbor next to you who endorses this feel? Yeah, so that's so that so if you saw the property, the basically the homes that are in between it, um, I would say if we were to do that, I I feel that it would imp probably impede more on on her. I I, I would guess if I were to ask her if I was going to put shrubs, she'd probably object to that because she has a couple of kids and they they yeah. do have kids. At their house quite a bit and that they are always running on that in between our homes right there it might start blocking that off a little more than she would probably want but i you know i guess i could always check i'm i'm making an assumption i, I don't disagree with yeah you. It, it's uh, i didn't know if you could actually even squeeze them in there. i i'd have to check the lines it would be tight right and also i would another suggestion i think i'm trying to be helpful here uh, the uh, drain at the rear of that you ought to run it down into the ground almost like your front one because mm -hmm. it's there and it looks like you're going to get hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's water, like I said, water's been an issue and you probably saw a small brick barrier going around the front of the house too. That was to keep yeah. uh, like water. Ran those pipes down into the yeah, the, all the other ones are. The only one that's not is that oh. rear one there. Yeah, all of them go into the ground to the back. That's uh, it, Lisa. General General. Thank you, Lisa. More of a, probably a, a, a technical question, but should the permit be for a special because there'll be two vehicles as well as the? Yeah, I wasn't aware of the the snowmobile trailer um, as part of the application, but it probably the record should be corrected to okay. to make sure that's part of part of the discussion. Yeah. Correct. That could be my fault. I'm sorry if I didn't make that clear. I thought it was because it was much smaller that it didn't apply. I didn't know I had to put that. Just because it's the the regulation is for one vehicle, gotcha. regardless of the size. Okay. Well, it's a right. No. It, it is. It's one vehicle. One vehicle in the back. In the back. Yeah. Under eighteen. Right. <laughs> this right. is two vehicles. Two vehicles. One not in the being, back. One yeah, right. The so, um, I will I will uh, note that the uh, applicant had submitted um, a, a letter and it did have the signature of the next door neighbor at Nine Crest. Um, indicating support for the proposal. Which did you have a question? No, That's the one directly to the left that um, I believe George was talking about. What? That was her. The one that is on She's the other really side. directly affected by it. Yeah. Right. Well yeah. I think that <coughs> one of the basis, Mr. Chairman, for even uh, of the approval of this is the neighbors very happy with it, or appears to be. And uh, yeah, you know, one, uh, we. The, the opponent here, the one letter that opposes? Two. So two? there's yeah. two. Which one? There's two or three. They're There's not. two or three. Are, they, are any of those people near you? No, one's in Old Weathersfield, about a mile and a half away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other one's about three blocks over towards... Um, Wells Road. Towards Wells, correct. Was there an address on the second one? No, but they live on... Oh, you, you know where they are? Okay. So we struggle with this every time it comes before us, and I, I just can't help, you know, the first, the first excuse, and I, I say that without trying to show bias, is we didn't know. And I don't know how we get the public to understand this before they buy in, because all it does is put you in a difficult position, this board in a difficult position, and your neighbors in a difficult position. Yeah, right? yeah agreed. So, and, I, you know, I don't want to tell you that I would have, you know, that – I'm not going to tell you 100% that that would have made us buy an 18-footer, but it may have. You know, if I, if I knew this was going to be an issue, I, but you it know, still it was have never be even back. a concern. Right. Uh, understood. Right. Yeah. So, 
Um, in, and in the past, when we have had a dialogue and, and made some <coughs> accommodations through a special permit, we talked about time duration, or we talked to the applicant about, you know, okay, for the, you know, you didn't know it, you start planning for it now because we're going to put a two-year duration on it, and you know, and you're going to have to find someplace else to store it after <coughs> that or something, mm -hmm. right? That kind of stuff. So those are the things that we've discussed in the past on some of the. Is there anybody in the audience who uh, wishes to speak on this application? It is a public hearing. All right, not seeing anybody. Did we also have a conversation about the dimensions and like reviewing what is like the state of practice of the industry? And I do recall we did we went we did through that exercise school. some time ago and uh, we did do a compare a comparison to what other towns are, are doing. Eight, and eighteen is still. Uh, eighteen is what you have, you guys. As well, a what we have, yeah, as a group. Um, no, I'd say it's on the um, more restrict, so more restrictive smaller. size. Yeah, these is things that's aren't. The point he's making. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is this maybe do we want to increase it uh, somehow? Not uh, that it would maybe at least this. discuss it. The last time we discussed it, you, there was a consensus not to increase it. it uh, Twenty-one, it I think, if I remember right, was. Yeah. Forgetful. Okay. So, um, but you didn't want to pursue that so at I that time. I'd still be slightly over that, unfortunately. Oh, sure. <laughs> but, yeah. And you're on the side anyway, so it wouldn't Yeah, I, that's the thing. You know, that's, yeah. we said, well, we oh, can get this on the side of the house where you really can't, yeah. you really can't see it. Right now, if you saw it right now, it's like, well, it's pretty obvious because it's out in the driveway because I'm, <coughs> I'm, you know, doing some maintenance to it to put it away. But as you can see from the pictures, when it's on the side, it's, it's really not obvious uh, unless you're right in front of the house or right behind us, so. Um, I think another. Okay. Yeah, but my problem <coughs> with a lot of these is consistency, mm. and uh, um, <coughs> it's it's very difficult for me uh, as a member to, to think. Well, this one is better than the last application because it's. Um, it, I know don't, don't like this rule to begin with. I, I, I think that uh, having it as a special permit is a really not in favor. But that's what's on my book. You know, at this point, you know, I voted against these. Just about every single one that's come before us, um, and so I have to be consistent. And uh, oh, I feel for this this family, this couple who didn't realize it, uh, but we've had many other people come forth with the same situation that they were unaware. They bought a boat or they bought a trailer. They were unaware of it, and they were forced to find other places to store the vehicle. And uh, uh, I'm looking at those other folks that didn't look too bad, but we, we voted against it. And it's a matter of consistency. Uh, I, I couldn't vote in favor of this application. So, do we have questions of the Just a question uh, for the applicant, if I may. Um, y you've, you've, your application is to be able to park both trailers in, in the, on the side rather than in the rear. And their claim, as I understand it, is that there is that the rear yard do, is too wet to permit it. To permit it. Reasonably. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I couldn't put my truck in four wheel drive at time, and I'm not saying it's always going to be this muddy mess. But a lot of the times, it would be. Yeah. It seemed like from from the diagram that you presented with your application that there's you know, that there's quite ample space between. You know the the boundary of your of your of your the, your wet yard mm -hmm. as opposed to the, you know the 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 width in the, in the rear of, of you know the dry part of your backyard mm -hmm. and that with a bit of uh, uh, site work uh, graveling or you know it would be a bit of an expense but there, that that with some planning you might be able to accommodate. Uh, the trailers back there without impinging upon the uh, the dry or the wet part portion of, of your lawn unless the wet portion is far more extensive than what you've indicated in your drawing. Can you address that? Have you explored that issue? Have you talked it over with any contractors or anything? Uh, no, I haven't talked with any contractors. Um, we've had stone put down uh, on the side of the home for the other trailer and we've had stone put down for the um, we have a shed in the back, so um, that could be done. Um, the, I guess, you know, my thoughts on it were, 
to be honest with you, if it did go back there, it would be more of a site, you know, some might call it more of a site sore just sitting in the backyard. So the way all the homes are aligned, to be honest with you, on the side of the house of where, if, where we're, you know, promoting it going would have the least visual impact, I would say, to anyone. So if my neighbors were on their back porch and it's on the side of their house, they won't even see it at all. Um, even my direct neighbor, where her patio is, she might see the slight corner of it. Um, if we had it in what I would call the middle of the yard, to, you know, towards the side, away from the what I would call the wetland, um, everybody would see it. So anybody on their back porch just looking down would see this camper trailer in the backyard. So, you know, if I had to say if anybody, if, if I could bring in my direct, you know, three or four neighbors maybe and say, hey, would you rather have it on the side of my house or in the backyard? I would say they'd probably vote to have it on the side because they really won't see it. Um, but I could explore that. But that would be my, my thought of, you know, I'd probably not want to put it in the yard just because then it, it would have more of a, you know, people would see it a lot bet more if it was there. Would the observation take place for people to be passing by in front, either in a vehicle or walking, if it was parked, if they were parked in the back? You'd still see the same shot of it, I guess, which is which would really just be the front, sort of the front panel, which is in one of the pictures there. You'd still see that going by because it would be aligned with that, really. So you'd kind of still see the same shot of it, I guess, if you were walking by. Uh, it would just be sort of further back, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then if you were walking, I, I don't know if you know the neighborhood, but it, you know, we're maybe the third house up from the corner. Um, so Pine Acres is down. So if you were to also make a left down that road, you can look clearly up everybody's yards for about at least five or six houses, and it would be very obvious sitting in, the, in where you're talking about putting it. It would be right kind of in the middle. You'd, you'd really see it. Um, yeah, I mean, right. fr frankly, that, that and the water were things that sort of made me believe this was a reasonable request because, you know, for the first six houses on that side of the street, there, there's no backyard landscaping, there are no fences. Yeah. You know, it's just one continuous open space. Then between that and west something, westward or whatever the next one over is, there's like a ditch with a few trees and then all those backyards. So it would be it would be kind of like that that um, shed or garage that we were looking at on Collier where they thought they were putting it way in the back you know, to hide it, but by putting it way in the back, it became more obvious to everybody than it than it would have been if it had been closer to the front. And uh, you know, I, I guess you know, I I shared Dan's concern about consistency, but maybe from the opposite perspective of having mm -hmm. voted for most of these. And and frankly, I care less about whether the neighbor is okay with it than whether there's some legitimate reason like, you know, water in the backyard or um, the ability to screen it with fences or shrubbery or something to, to minimize the impact than I am necessarily on taking a poll of the, the people who walk by or drive by or live next door. Um, and I, I also have said in the past that I wish these applications would go to the ZBA. I'll just say it again. <laughs> Except they don't. They don't. Yeah, I they mean, don't determine hardship too easily. No, but too, I mean, the, you know, well, yeah, I, pretty unless, liberal unless anyways. Raises the issue. They they find a hardship all the time. Right. So so help me. You know, what's your perspective on the second trailer? Because between the two trailers, they are longer than the house, and I'm not inclined at all to be discussing a trailer that is purposely left in the front yard when this is all done. No, I wouldn't want it in the front yard. Right. So we've got two trailers, one that's 10-ish plus the 25 with some space between them. And I don't know the depth of your house, but it's sticking out. And it better be sticking out backwards. It, it's yeah. not going to stick out frontwards. It, it's easy to do that. It's just so that placement. Means, so that means pushing it farther back, mm -hmm. maybe extending your pad or whatever. It would only have – that would – for me, that would be easy than saying, hey, let's just put this at the edge of where the wetland is and put another pad in which to be honest with you, 
I wouldn't be surprised if I got like, hey, why is it now in the middle of your backyard when we, like he said, there's no, there's no trees. If you're, lo at, if you're at the bottom of Crest, sort of down looking up, there's not a fence or any shrubbery until I think maybe the sixth or seventh house up. So you, you have a clear view of everybody's backyard and patios and sheds and stuff, and then this thing would just kind of be sitting there. But it would be easy for me just to extend. I'd probably only need another five feet of stone put down, so to, to line them up, you yeah, know, so they're not protruding. What's that? Everybody, everybody gets along. They don't put up fences. No, yeah, yeah. And, it, and I noticed it today. I we, agree with Rich. Everybody it, does get along, other, actually. That, that's why I saw it. I have yeah. tremendous oh, powers yeah. of observation. <laughs> <laughs> everybody does get along in our neighborhood. And I, and I, I did go around after finding this out and just kind of tried to get a, a, a finger on the pulse of, you know, what my direct neighbors felt about the camper and, you know, I'm sure everybody tells you this when they're coming for these, but, um, you know, I'm <laughs> sure you've heard be it before. Yeah, right. But, uh, you know, everybody was just kind of like, we don't, you know, that doesn't bother us at all. But so, so the other topic that we often kick around in this, and it's going to come to you, Peter, um, is sometimes we're talking about whether there's a duration on it and sometimes not when the application is so specific in terms of height and length, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then it goes with the land. This thing goes with the land. So basically, when you sell the house, it's got this special permit attached to it, right? Okay. Forever so the next ever person could say, "Oh, we can have a camper too." Okay. <coughs> yeah. Gotcha. Right? So we'd like to not have that be the case, and I'd rather have it expire. The other alternative is if it's so specific, the next person comes in and has a twenty-six footer, it doesn't work, or if it's just a touch too high. So Understood. is this application specific enough to run to to be comfortable that there's no risk on that? Or should we be perhaps putting a duration? I think um, any motion should be very specific then, so that you're assured that uh, it's um, you know narrow, narrowly defined enough to to be specific to this applicant, so that if he does sell the property, uh, we don't have to worry about this uh, ad infinitum. So I, I have heard from the town attorney just last week that there was a recent court case that basically said you cannot attach um, time limits to special permits they don't expire they run with the land they so our practice of attaching those types of conditions when i did explain it to the town attorney that it has become a common practice was uh, frowned upon i haven't had a chance to look at the uh, specifics of the of the court decision to uh, you know make sure it applies unilaterally across the board but nevertheless um, the general takeaway from that Rich, and maybe you know the reference I'm talking about, but yeah. um, was that uh, that practice is not, uh, is, is frowned upon and, and obviously was decided against. So um, so I think if you, um, with make, that in mind. Make, make and model. Make, make, your, make your motion very specific. <laughs> to the um, make and model. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you want to get into that minutia. So, I was just uh, going to say if there's anything I can do to help with that, you know, I can't tell you I'll be there for 40 years, but I never know. I'm, I think a lot of people have said that. Oh, Said I was going to move 30 years ago. I don't know, but if there's something I can do to help with that, let well, me know. It, al it also constrains you, right? So if it's making model 23 feet, you're not going to buy the next one without knowing this, and you know, yeah. then the next time, you know. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Right. Can't can't use that card again, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, George. Before a motion's made, uh, I kind of agree with with Rich on this. Much much of his observation. Uh, but I really wish we didn't have the second spring. Mm. But that's still my opinion. Well, I think, I think whatever we do should address the second trail. So whatever you're thinking, right? All right. Do we need anything more from the uh, applicant or motion? Did you get the make and model in the record? Mm -hmm. Just to be, to be uh, sure? I, I think it's okay. jotted down, but I can give it to you if you want. Please. Yeah. So it's a 2019 Rockwood Rue. And the Ooh. model is 23FL. R O O, yeah, Rockwood Rue. Rock Rue. Rockwood Rue. Rockwood. Yeah. Okay. All right. Make a motion and close the hearing. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Would anybody like to uh, try a motion?
Rich and Jerry know what you're thinking. Yeah, I guess just to move things along, I'll make a motion that we approve application 2023-19-Z uh, for permission to keep a 23-foot uh, RV trailer and a 10-foot snowmobile trailer um, in the side or rear yard uh, of the property at 15 Crest Street. With gravel. Yeah, with, with gravel base underneath them. And flush with the front yeah, of the house. Yeah, the no. side mean it can't Meaning go. No. Can't be in is the that, front. Is that yeah. Yeah. finite yeah. enough? Right. Yeah, that was what I meant was not, yeah. not forward of <coughs> the house. What are your thoughts as the land use lawyer? Should we bother with the... I've never thought time limits were appropriate. Not time limits, the uh, specificity of the, or it's in the application. I mean, if he, if he buys a different 23 foot one, I don't, I don't care if he buys the 2021 Rockwood Rue, <laughs> Rue with Rock or whatever it was. You know, we're, we're just saying we don't want a 12 foot snowmobile trailer and a 25 foot RV Okay. Yeah, and we're also not saying that we're okay with a like 33 feet of RV mm. type of stuff. We're just saying, like if if you combine that all into one recreational vehicle, like we need to specify that 23 is the biggest singular unit. We sold both trailers and bought a three, 33 foot, <laughs> which we're getting. Saying. Yeah, right. We yeah, can't. understood. <laughs> yeah, It'd probably cause the whole side of the yard to sink. <laughs> Probably. All right. We have a motion and we have a second. Any uh, further dialogue on it? All, right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Two opposed. Uh, it's, it passes. <laughs> it's six to two. Right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank I you. appreciate Bye. it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, really, we're going to advise all the applicants to bring cute babies to the hearing. <laughs> so it is my understanding that item 3.2 has been removed. That was withdrawn uh, earlier today. Right. Okay, Ryan. Moving on to item 3.3, uh, application 2025-19-Z. Talia Pedra uh, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2 to construct approximately 5,000 square foot building with showroom, outdoor display, and associated site improvements at 1912 Berlin Turnpike. Peter, before they start, am I hallucinating or did we already talk about this one time a few years ago? We uh, started a process uh, one time a few years ago. I don't know how far it uh, got that time, but um, yes, this is not a, uh, this is a deja vu uh, all over again, so. That's why we asked them to make presentations. <laughs> well, I'd like to see <laughs> something physical in front no, of I me know. on paper. And, they have a point. You know, they, 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 they didn't present anything like that. I mean, this is a technical question at the beginning. Did well, you? I see that, but I don't. Yeah, okay. No, I didn't think it was an update. But that's all. This. Okay. Well, I think part of it is that we can't act on it tonight anyway. Right. That'll work, as long as you can get it to balance. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Ozzy Torres. I'm a professional engineer registered here in the state of Connecticut and in Massachusetts. Um, 
And I, my offices are in uh, 63 Reed Drive, Wethersfield. Um, I'm here representing uh, Natalia Pedra and Tiago Temponi. Uh, they should be here in a minute. But uh, if you have questions, they'll be here to answer those questions. Um, basically, we have now a, a survey uh, included in the so package. Excuse me, are you, are you at all concerned that um, they won't be here to answer the questions? No, they will be. They should be here in a minute. They were supposed to be here a little sooner. So I guess, I guess there is an applicant after you if you're concerned and you want to wait 15 minutes, we can take somebody before you. It's, um, it's up to you. I mean, I, I, think I don't we, want us. I think we can go ahead. Okay. I, I really don't. I okay. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, the site, of course, is at 1912 Berlin Turnpike on the northbound lane, uh, just north of the 175 route interchange with Berlin Turnpike. It is a like a rectangular trapezoidal site of 0.6 acres. Um, presently, now, the, the, I'm sorry, the applicant is requesting approval of a site plan with um, a merchandise display, outdoor merchandise display as part of the uh, special permit. Um, so at this time, uh, I'll explain the existing conditions. The site slopes generally toward the east, north is upward to the east, and um, um, is mostly um, wooded and vegetated around the rear toward the wetland and um, floodplain, about one, about 3,000 square feet of wetland involved, and we are, we have met wetlands and we're gonna meet with them again tomorrow night. Um, they produce, their, their manufacturing process is to make marble products, tiles, et cetera, stone for mar countertops and, and that kind of thing. Um, the lot is vacant presently. Uh, there are some remnants of pavement from the old uh, service station or whatever was there prior to this. Uh, there are existing utilities that serve the parcel already, electric and sanitary. There used to be a well on the parcel, but um, it has been abandoned, so there's no water. Uh, the proposal will be to bring in a water line and a, and a hydrant to the front of the parcel. Um, now, looking at the proposal, what they're proposing is to put in a 50 by 150 foot, 5,250 square foot, building. Um, so this is the face that will be out toward Berlin Turnpike, this elevation, and then this is the south elevation. And the north elevation and the back of the building, but the north elevation will have a, a door and um, pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, the roof line for the shop area is much higher than the roof line for the office area. There's an office area in the front and the shop area in the back. The layout of the building interior is the the office area in the front end display and um, uh, sales area and then they have the manufacturing the workshop area in the rear with the doors and um, there's a door to the north just um, in case they they sell the building they want to be able to give whoever comes in a choice to use that also for ventilation as they work Um, let me put that up again. Okay. 
Now the proposal is to have uh, six parking spaces in the front of the building and then another 13 along the south boundary. Um, the entrance into the, into the shop area will be through these two doors and through the interior of the building. The display area will be alongside the building as shown here um, with parking on the south side. They may use some of this parking area for display uh, depending on how much volume comes in and out to, to store some of that material. I don't know if you've ever seen their existing uh, facility up in Berlin, Maryland, Berlin. Uh, but basically they have a lot of this large marble pieces and stone outside, stored outside, and then when someone chooses the, white, the one they want, then they go in and they manufacture their countertops with it, and it's pretty much their whole process. The lighting for the parking will be just a... Uh, wall packs on the building itself, shining out towards the spaces. The, um, we have prepared stormwater management for uh, for the wetlands. Uh, we have no, uh, no increase in runoff. The discharge will go to the east um, we have underground uh, detention system. Also, the catch basins have hoods in them uh, to clean the water as well. And right before the entrance into the underground chambers, there is a water quality unit that cleans all the water <coughs> off, off the parking areas. The roof water will go directly into the chambers from the roof being the cleaner water. Um, <coughs> there's a splash pool with a head wall around it uh, before we get to the wetlands. So again, uh, we've provided the town engineer with the drainage calculations that show there is no increase in runoff for the, uh, the storm system as well as um, the capacity of those basins they're designed to handle even up to the 100-year storm so that it all gets into the system. Um, and those were items that were questioned for wetlands, and we've answered them, submitted them, and we should hear something from um, town engineer, but we haven't, uh, but that'll happen tomorrow. There's a dumpster pad alongside um, in the rear so that it's screened. It's got um, we have details of the fence that goes around the dumpster pad and the screening as well as the it's on that other end there as well as the, um, the concrete pad for the dumpsters. The area in front of the dumpster pads is uh, designed so that any truck, dumpster truck comes in, doesn't create those dimples that we usually see because they're so heavy. So we have an extra base under that portion of the parking lot. We have all the water, uh, MDC water requirements for the water main that's going to be extended out to the building, plus the hydrants and so on. And the third detail sheet is the, um, again, the splash pad, the underground storage system, the water quality unit, and all of the, the uh, drainage requirements that are shown on the plan. We also provided a turning radius 
plan to show that the vehicle for the dumpster or an emergency vehicle can enter and exit the site. We located the travel lanes on the highway, the surveyor did, so that uh, we can show that the uh, truck can come in and, and go out safely and end on, on the uh, proper lanes. Does the uh, highway ramp come up there? Where does it come up? Just below? The highway ramp is below. In below that? All yes, right. it's below that. So in the new lane starts in, that ramp lane starts in further down. Right below us there. No, no, but we will submit the plan to, to DOT for their approval and we'll agree with the commission that you know this all be conditional that we get approval from the uh, DOT. Uh, they may ask us to do a little adjustment of the lane in front of the lot. Uh, we'll, we'll have to handle that as we see it, but at this point, this is the proposal we have, and um, I think um, <coughs> we pretty much covered all of it. We, we have prepared the landscaping according to the town regulations. We've uh, provided your landscaping chart and so on, and there is an erosion and sediment control plan also provided within this whole set. Um, I'll show you right here. And uh, that was an application we included in the wetlands application for a permit, for, I mean, uh, to be approved for that erosion sediment control measures. Again, we did get comments from um, engineering for that plan, and uh, we answered them all, but we haven't re gotten the return information, but we will tomorrow. And if this hearing is... Um, tabled and we'll present all that to you then and we'd be happy to. You've, you've answered so them you, or you've, you've given them like dispositions? We've given them all the answers and di dispositions and the plans, these plans are? Yes, these plans are correct. These plans that I have. They are? They are correct. They've, they've been corrected here. The plans you received oh. are a little earlier so they were not <coughs> on there but all of the comments were corrected here and um, we gave him uh, an outline answering each of the items, so I, th I think we covered everything, but you will know when you hear from Derek. So, so let me just, uh, for everybody's purposes, and Rich alluded to it, and now you're saying it, <coughs> the expectation is tonight this hearing will be continued because we don't have all the information. We have comments going to the applicant from town staff and responses, but we don't have conclusion from town staff that it's um, up to their liking. Do we have everybody on the town staff, everybody's comments, or just the town engineer? You have the fire marshal, if I'm not mistaken. You have the town engineer. You do not have the town planner yet. I have not had a chance to review it. Um, we knew that you wouldn't be able to act on it tonight, so there's another three-week time frame before the next meeting, so uh, we should have that back and forth in the next uh, few weeks. Um, uh, most importantly, however, uh, we don't have the Wetlands Commission's decision and we do, do not have design review uh, comment <coughs> comments yet. So that's why those are the primary reasons the hearing um, needs to be kept open and continued to that point in time. Um, you do have uh, one hearing, although it's not on your agenda. The a an application did come in today. So you will have another item um, for the next meeting as well. So um, I... Maybe it's my bias, but I always like to hear that the applicant has had some conversation with CONDOT about the access in and out before we give approval, even though their, their action is subsequent to. But I'm a little uneasy when I hear it hasn't gone there at all yet. Um, we'll try and go within this time before the next meeting, okay. and, and we'll have something to report to you about it. Thank you. DOT is familiar with this site. There have been previous, we actually approved a project on this site uh, some time ago. I don't know if they took it to the next step with DOT, but I know as part of that application, uh, there was a uh, at least a preliminary review. So when you do talk to DOT, I'm sure they'll have some level of familiarity and a file on this. It's got it's got to be it's got to be ten years ago. Right. I think the I think the roadway has changed though. Today you're coming out and off of a 
off of a lane that's dedicated from the ramp. You're in that ramp lane and it becomes a full lane and you're coming on and off of that. So um, coming to this site from the ramp is relatively easy. If you're coming from the Berlin Turnpike and you're heading north, you actually have to cross a ramp lane to get in. So I, I'm going to be interested to know, you know, it, everybody has a right to access to the property. It's just, you know, I, I have my concerns about how Condot will ask them to configure the front. That's all. Right. Other questions for the applicant? So no. Where on the site would the stone actually be marketed or, or stored on the, on the outside in relationship to the, the front edge of the building? Along the side of the building here. Possibly here, and, and they have six employees total, and um, they they're showing 19 parking spaces. So they might remove a few of the spaces here to add some of the display. Um, so I I think you'll need to work that out with staff because I don't think it can float. We'll need to specify we'll need that. To specify exactly where it's fine. So the stone it would be stored outside of the fenced area, and yeah. le and left there. No one can move it. I mean, well, it's it, true. It is so heavy. It's, I mean, it's they, true. They need a, a Cre creative forklift. minds, however. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've had it up on the Berlin Turnpike for years now, okay. and they've never had Hasn't a problem. Hasn't been a problem. Okay. 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 Other questions. Did this property used to be a gas station? Yes. I think so. Yeah. You know, I guess <coughs> obviously if you're going to be digging, you need to know how fully it was remediated. Right. I, I, if we find something, of course, we're going to have to deal with it. But I don't think at this time there's any uh, any sign of it right yeah. now. Yeah, and I hope not because I, I think hope the town not, yeah. owned it at one point too. I see. Bringing uh, materials in and and day-to-day -day operations of the site. I, I, I assume it's not the situation where you need to back a tractor trailer up back there and you're unloading, so it's kind of... It's not as big as a tractor trailer. It's a smaller unit. Um, and forklifts probably take it off kind of thing? Hello, hello. <laughs> so um, for the stones, some of the trucks, the suppliers, they already have their own boom truck. So they have like an attached forklift and most of it, we don't really accept deliveries without a boom truck because then I have to get my guy to do something that they should be doing. <laughs> so most of the time it's their own truck and they do it. Rarely on occasion we get our forklift and we get it out. But most of the time it's a boom truck. And, and my question is more about having to put a vehicle in the right place. We, there's not a lot of maneuverability in the site, so it's not like you can back vehicles up and everything all that easily. Big tractor trailers. I, I understand where you're going, and it sounds yeah. just fine. You pull it in, they, yeah. they swing their boom, and they pull it off. Yeah, our space now is much smaller on the Berlin Turnpike in Meriden, much smaller than this one is. Like We have very little room, and we do it just fine, safely, thank God. Thank you. I want to ask a question. Yes. I'm glad to see you back here from 10 years ago. I know you said you were thinking of it at one time. But, uh, <laughs> yes. You, know, you made a nice presentation back then. Uh, oh, thank I you. I was all the, I was so <laughs> nervous. <laughs> I'm glad you decided to go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I did notice when I look at it, it looks like you can probably make the trash pickup a little easier. It looks like the swing of the truck comes pretty close to this display area and it wouldn't be hard to straighten that out a little bit and just make we, it a little we'll easier we later. Can, we can look at that. Okay. Yep. Um, do ahead. you have the existing drainage information at the inverse? Do just I? the the one concern that I have looking at it is the drainage plan showing the crossings over the existing pipes right. that we don't that, have in That this existing course. pipe is an issue that we're still looking at. It <laughs> it seems to be abandoned. The surveyor went to um, DOT, Pasco in place. That outlet isn't? It isn't there. <coughs> the pipe, the stormwater actually goes north. The slope of the, we, we found out with the survey now, that the slope of, this, of the pipe in the street is an 18 inch pipe 
in the highway headed north and then goes out by the pawn shop down in that area and across to the wetlands on by them. But no one has anything, uh, there's no easement. The, the state just had rights to drain. That's what it's called, just rights to drain according to the surveyor. And um, everyone says it's abandoned. Now, no one's jumped into the catch basin and looked because you can't, that highway is screaming by. So it'll be determined when we get in the field. If it's there, we're ready to relocate it and get around us without any problem if it con conflicts with our storm system. But we only have the, in the elevation of the pipes in the catch basin out front, but we can't find the end. We, everyone searched. We've searched, I've searched for it. We've all gone back there. Hmm. There's no pipe. I think the pipe is abandoned. It used to be a very small culvert, very short. The pipe, the, the pipe used to go out maybe 20 feet and hit a head wall and then it would go right out to the wetlands. That's how it was years ago. And then when someone put in the gas station, the state may have decided to, to take the storm system north and continue it that way and abandon that outlet. And I think that's what it is. The surveyor went and I said, researched it. Hopefully we'll have more information for you again by the next meeting. Um because we're going to be holding the hearing open, I guess there's a little p part of me that's going, we don't need every answer, but I'd like to make sure the applicant leaves here understanding any of our concerns, right? And if that makes sense, like operationally or something, are, are there things that bother you or, or you have questions about operationally for the thing? Because the town engineers are going to go through this and give us their final comments, I presume. George. I'm not sure I like the outside of the building or the materials on it, but that's why I'm interested in design review. Design review, yeah. Looking at that stuff, so yeah. I hope I convey that to them. Again. Yeah, why isn't it tile? <laughs> why isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't look so right. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little dull. No. <laughs> I bet. And So is is there a uh, is this a noisy operation? I assume what's going on is you're dropping the stone off and you're working the stone in the back, right? And you've got a showroom up front. It's a, it's all sawing and in, in in the shop, and you don't hear a thing outside. No, you, you don't, don't hear, hear a thing. thing. No. And if you hear the radio, so it's, it's all like a laser machine. So we there you can talk and it's not enough noise. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I have no. The waste, I mean, when you cut stone, there's going to be pieces, but is one dumpster enough to handle? I mean, I don't even know if the stone will go in the dumpster. Well, there's a special dumpster that we use that does all only stone. We only put stone, and we take it up. We call it in as soon as it fills up. We pick it up and take it away. And then we have a regular dumpster for stuff, regular okay. stuff. Okay, so you said one dumpster, dumpster on the plan. So, so, so is that some place that, that should be shown or located on the, is on the how plan? How big is your... Uh, it's a little dumpster for the trash. Yeah. Yeah. The stone. And the stone. The stone. Yeah. 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 Stone is property. Is it in this? Is it in the building? It's, it's outside. outside the building. No, right now it's outside. Right now it's outside. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so where are we going to put it? Are we yeah. Gonna so put that please discuss that. that. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have to make a, a big enough. Uh, we have a camping trailer. Dump mm -hmm. area to put twelve feet. Yeah. 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 Snowmobile. <laughs> I just ha I didn't know that was up there. 
So we have to adjust the dumpster. Yeah. We'll adjust the dumpster to make sure it works. And it uh, will fit also their trash dumpster as well. Okay. Other, good question. Other op operational issues? Or? No, I think I you've touched on the things that I would be interested in knowing more about. Okay. Do you want to call it and see? Anybody from the public? I apologize. Oh, excellent. Oh, would, would, you, uh, would you help us out and come on up and introduce yourself? Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Jeffrey Galen. I own 1807 Berlin Turnpike across the street and down a little bit next to the Macris Diner and Bob's Market. And brought up a couple of concerns. One was answered was the noise outside the building. There's enough there now as it is from all the cars. Um, but even more important is the runoff. Now they said they're using lasers to cut. So I'm assuming there's not a lot of small residue particles because the water that they're talking about does go through drains and does end off in my yard. We have a lot of wildlife there and uh, we actually take care of them and take care of it. Um, town's aware of it because they've been there before because we had dammed a little bit at the end of my drain from the Berlin Turnpike so this little pond. I just want to make sure we're not killing any alive things. So I don't know what kind of chemicals or residue. I know that when I've cut that type of material before, it's not done using a laser. So needless to say, there was fine particles and dust. And I just don't know what's gonna come through there. If they filter at all, there may not be an issue. Hmm. But chem chemicals and small particles will be a problem. You're all welcome anytime to come to the, my parking lot and you can see what we've done back there. And you can see how beautiful it is. Th what was there before, all the way down to where the gas station is, Cumberland Farms, was an underground I mean, it was originally overground, same kind of culvert, and it goes to uh, a brook. I'm not sure if the technical name of it is a cemetery book, but I think it is because it goes to the cemeteries past us. And it's clean, it's cleaned up. Years ago, when I first bought the property, uh, 40 years ago, when I first went there, there was oil and gasoline leaking from all the gas stations. And of course, all that got cleaned up. I don't know if the mobile station, which is closed, which is the one we're talking about here, if the, it was terribly polluted and it was supposed to be dug out and I don't know if it ever got done. So the property they're on, if it was cleaned up, great. If it wasn't, that's gonna have to get remediated. You know, it's, it's a serious problem. I mean, Bob's next door had the problem. The Macris Diner someday will have to get cleaned. That had oil tanks on it too, gas tanks. So this whole area is, pretty bad, but that you don't see any oil film there. Um, it was full of mud when they were doing the construction for 7-Eleven, and when they start doing the other properties up the hill a little bit, we're gonna see all that again, but nothing got hurt. You know, all the animals still were able to drink from the water. There's hundreds of frogs, they were all good, nobody died, and those that I would have expected from it being to from crystal clear to totally brown, but everything's okay. So I'm just concerned about chemicals and residue. Right. We'll, we'll ask the applicant. Okay, yeah. You, yeah. Like I said, everybody's welcome to come and take a look and see what we've done there. It, it's, we don't have that much wetlands that is th in this town that are in that kind of condition. I mean, obviously over by the river, there's quite a bit, but over there, it's, it all got covered over. Next behind Bob's Market, that used to be open, all got covered over. So it's only exposed from 1807 all the way to the cemetery. Which one is 1807? Electronic service labs, big gray building. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So right. that was my concern. Everything Thank else you. got answered. Listening in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm all for more taxpayers in this town. <laughs> the, the one that got canceled is a car dealership or something indoor. I can't imagine why the town wouldn't want that. It's money. Unless they're pouring water, uh, oil in the back. That would be bad. But... <laughs> You know, it's tax things are good in this town. We have enough high taxes. Thank you. Sure. All right, so two basic two basic questions was, uh, and, and I th I'm pretty sure the contaminated materials thing is going to play itself out. There are things on record, and it'll be have to be part of the mm -hmm. permit in order to start construction. Um, 
But in terms of your water, your wastewater in the process, can you describe that a little bit? Yes. Their wastewater is recycled. It, someone comes in. Yeah, we have our they, guys. They, it's, not, it's, not, it's just as, it, as they cut with the water and then there's like the dust in the bottom, it almost turns into like a muddy. They literally just pile it up. It doesn't drain outside. Nothing drains no. outside. Or, Everything stays inside. They pick it up with a shovel and they literally put it in that same container where the stone, only stones go. And they do that on a daily basis and they take it out every day. They do that. So nothing's draining outside. Um, we have a restaurant next to us right now, and, they, and there's a lot of people. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, San Sushi Restaurant. They're our neighbors. Oh, is that what you're next to? Okay. Yes, they're our great neighbors <laughs> called Steak and Dogs for Us. We're right there. Um, we're right next to, um, to them. And um, we've also, at one point, we were across the street in Meredith, which we actually had homeowners behind, which they would pick up their dogs and everything. If it wasn't safe, if there was anything. And they all wrote letters at the time. Um, and so they said that they wanted they were fine with us there um to get because we actually had to get letters from the people that lived behind our building right. we don't make a mess so, so the all. so the wastewater process that's inside the building yeah. is is recycled filtered taking this taking the the yeah. sludge out but more importantly it's if if, if and when it gets um disposed of it actually goes in the sewer right it's yeah, more it of a it's right There's it's nothing's going outside yeah. storm water storm yeah. water yeah. process yeah. water yeah. right Okay, uh, so it so it goes in the sanitary sewer, not the storm sewer. <laughs> Just no, uh, not even in the sanitary sewer. What they're saying is that it goes on the floor. They pick it up we and they up, and they put it we along with the stone. No, I'm talking about the water. I'm not talking about the no. The water, sorry. the what is filtered, but yeah, the water will go in. But it's filtered and it does go in the sewer. And we will have MDC approval of that. Okay. Yeah. okay. Right. Nothing goes that was all outside. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just trying to address his concern yeah, that it was yeah. going to go into the, the drain out in the road no, and, no, and no. throw no. away. No, That, in fact, it's going to no. go to the South Meadows and we'll be yeah. smelling it as we drive around and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did have a, a question for Natalia. It's a, is it all natural stone, no manufactured so stone? It's all nat manufactured stone, but honestly, most of the manufactured stones are actually made now. They say that it's more green, it's more natural, it's not porous. Um, it's man-made porous, but um, some of them you can actually have surgery on top of them. That's why it's top, that they're certified if you wanted to use it like in a surgery thing. So it, everything is very safe or natural. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I was concerned about um, some of the things that I've been hearing about the high silica, silica uh, in your manufactured in your cement type oh, no, product. We, yeah, no, ours is just... Mm -hmm. which is man-made um, stone. We don't do any, like, formica, corian, um, any of that stuff. So it's only quartz or natural stone. And that's it. And quartz is, like I said, quartz is very safe. Cambria, which is a brand of quartz, you can even have it in medical facility. Like, it's, it's that safe. Um, so everything is very, very green. Because it's your kitchen counter. You want it to be sanitary. You want it to be safe. It's inside your house. You want <laughs> Anything else? So if we have nothing else for the applicant, if there's nobody else in the public? We have a motion we continue this hearing to November 6th. Sec second. Thank you both. Is there any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, we'll see you when you have your environment, your permits and you'll talk to DOT and you get your resolution of comments, right? Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Science there, I'm doing HVAC too. A lot of work. All right. <laughs> well, good luck.
luck. Oh, we were tomorrow. No, yeah, all right. Thursday. Yeah, all right. Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Moving on to item 3.4, application 2026-19Z. Oh, boy. Uh, Praveen Bhai Patel? Did I? Sorry. That's my bad. Uh, seeking a special, uh, speaking a special permit in accordance with section 5.8, Weathersfield Planning Zoning Regulations to operate a liquor store at 1382 Burlington Turnpike. Please join us, uh, <coughs> your, your name, and then uh, let us know what you're doing, sure. what you're proposing. Uh, my name is Mehul Shah. I'm representing Pravin Bhai Patel, uh, <coughs> helping out with their first adventure of liquor store uh, in the town here. And uh, what we are requesting is um, there is an existing liquor store in the, the stop and shop or the Jordan Lane shopping plaza um, on the other side of an L. Uh, we're trying to move that within the plaza next to the shop and shop where the old uh, Payless um, was that just recently closed. Um, <clears throat> the reason for moving is convenience to the customer, um, easy access to the store, uh, being directly into, you know, coming into the plaza, you know, easier access, and, of course, next to the stop and shop, and then they don't have to go all the way there, you know, to the grocery and then... And it's a little bit bigger location than the current store, so we will do serve better with more variety of, um, you know, wine and liquor. <coughs> Questions? So you're just moving from one side of the shopping center to the other? Yes. Okay. So... Uh, Peter has been kind enough to remind us what it is that we're supposed to consider when we uh, approve these. Um, it's under section 5.8 of the uh, zoning regs. And uh, the one that always strikes me are the proximity to the establishment of schools, churches, synagogues, or the residential neighborhoods, charitable institutions. Um, and so it's proximity and then also the, the number of them uh, that might otherwise be perceived to be a dominant characteristic of a neighborhood. So uh, just things to consider. Um, as the applicant has stated, it is just relocating, I was going to say a couple hundred feet, but I wouldn't actually know that distance, but it's obviously very close in, in the same development. This is a public hearing. Questions of the applicant? No? Just, just for the record, technically... I think initially we weren't even going to have it go through this process because it's the same site. It's a different street address, but it's one parcel of land. So there probably is an argument that it didn't necessarily need to go through this process, but nevertheless, um, the zoning officer determined that uh, because it, it's a different street address that uh, he felt it's uh, safer having it go through this process. Just for the record, we are maxed out on our permits at the state. I don't know if this applicant runs any risk by moving it from one, because you do have to go back through the state process. Yes. So that uh, maybe there's a opportunity for somebody else, but uh, they obviously have your approval before anyone else could, if they get your approval before anyone else. So I did advise <coughs> them uh, of that one concern. But as I said, um, initially we weren't going to have this go through. We were going to do this administratively, but we wanted the commission to at least have an opportunity to comment on it. So yeah. question. I mean, it is slightly bigger, so I don't know if it was exactly right. the same. I wouldn't. Right. Yeah. Peter, I, I, have a, I have a technical question. Um, because we're talking about proximity, and because Stop and Shop also sells beer, it, again, it's, a, it's, a, it's totally a technicality because it's the, the – but it, it, we wouldn't be assuming that this is now making it – characteristic of the plaza that's for the commission's um, deter de determination but I, I wouldn't necessarily it's not a it's not a like it's a grocery store next to a package store and I understand why they probably want to be closer to the grocery store in terms of their clientele so I think it's a good a good move of uh, probably also for the shopping center as a whole so um, that's kind of the way I looked at it um, there are residential there's a condominium um, you know across the street on the Berlin Turnpike there are residential homes in the neighborhood but Pretty much all of our commercial properties have those same characteristics, um, and there aren't um, churches uh, in close proximity uh, or schools, which is the other concern sometimes. So I, I, I didn't have those concerns in this, in this case. Thank you. 
Clearly, we have people in the public. Is there somebody here who'd like to speak on this topic? Okay. All right. No, no, no questions of the applicant themselves. Make a motion. Right, we thank close you. the hearing. Second. Thank you both. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Make a motion. We approve application 2026-19-Z and find that this does not um, raise concerns under the uh, proximity um, standards contained in our regulations. Thank you. Do I second? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, thank you. I'll give it to George. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to give it to both of you. Any, any dialogue? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Very good. Good Thank luck. You. Thanks. Thank you. All righty. Other business? Minutes? Minutes. George? Yeah. Uh, make a motion to approve the uh, minutes for. Uh, uh, Tuesday, October 1st, 2019. Thank you. Any edits? No edits that you noticed? No, they're perfect. Perfect. That's the way we like them. <laughs> In fact, they were Ryan, perfect. Ryan. I thought there was an error and I couldn't even find it. <laughs> there was. There was. was okay, you got to hide them. Again. <laughs> Ryan, would you like to second? Yeah, that's why I'm letting no, them do that. No, that's right. Ryan so wasn't here. I was I'm like, I don't think I can. Uh, oh, yeah, you, you can. actually can, but... All right, Rich will second. Yeah, I'll second it. Thank you. I'll all, forward all, all the motions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Uh, staff reports, anything this time around? Um, <coughs> no, nothing um, jumps out at me. Our zoning and property maintenance officer has been busy the last uh, few weeks with uh, a number of issues, but um, I'll keep you apprised of those as they, um, as they develop. But... Um, no, progress is, if you've been by the Puritan Furniture site, pro significant progress is uh, being made there. We did issue, and I don't know if I mentioned this at the last meeting, a temporary certificate of occupancy of, for the first Borden building at the corner, the office building conversion. Did you? Yeah. Uh, so that um, was temporary, uh, TCO'd. There's a few odds and ends we're still waiting for. Uh, they actually put the, uh, putting the asphalt down on the second property to get that um, prepared for the winter. Um, so they're making, um, Making good progress. Um, Seventy Ridge Road. Wait a minute, Steve. On, on the Puritan site, is, are they getting an application ready? Uh, they have an application that's uh, going to be heard tomorrow night at the Wetlands Commission. Oh, okay. And then they will that's be right. filing uh, with uh, design I never review. So much steel and concrete coming in and demolition in this town. That must have been that's a, a big building. World War II of just after well, a well there's a, there was a hu <laughs> huge slab, so you're seeing the giant oh, yeah. concrete they now. Yeah. Yep. So that application will be probably won't be in front of you maybe till the second or of November uh, or in December. Uh, so they still have to go through design review and. Is the dog thing coming in next time? The dog thing was filed today. That will be on your next agenda. So um, that will take, I think, some time. That's why I think I wanted this applicant to give you most of his presentation so you don't have to hear that all again at the next meeting. So, uh, so that'll be first, right? That'll be first. Um, so <coughs> um, I think those are the highlights. If anyone has any questions about anything else going on in town. Yeah, you started with 70. Uh, uh, s is it 70? Uh, Ridge Road, the corner, Ridge the old. Uh, yep, so that is uh, they're uh, making headway in there as well. Um, so that's going to start uh, heating up very soon uh, in terms of uh, uh, construction activity. Um, so those are the, we're about to give a CO to the daycare center on executive. Um, if, you've, if you've been down there, they just put the final asphalt, painted the parking. There's a few little things we got to work on, but uh, that should be uh, uh, buttoned up uh, very soon as well. So and nothing on the, the restaurant up on. Actually, that I went by there today, and they are starting to clean it up a little bit, which Very was nice. um, so something happened <coughs> in the last week or so that uh, Charles. Um, no, the restaurant up on the Berlin Turnpike, the, the old oh, former Carmen Anthony's. Yeah, it's all brown and 
uniform now. Yeah, they, they made some progress recently. I think they were, you know, really trying to button that up for the winter so they can mm -hmm. focus on the inside now. So, uh, um, and then the Charles restaurant, I think he filed for his building permit, so that should start. Um, you sh should see activity on that. Yeah, on Main Street in Old Weathersfield. Yeah, yeah. Landscaping. Yeah. yeah. So, and Lou? Why did the guy re uh, re take his thing out today, the car uh, deal? Uh, there were, uh, we had a bunch of comments that um, I don't, uh, and he didn't submit much of a plan hmm. to explain the comments. So I think, and there were other issues which I will keep in confidence with him that I, you know, not for public, uh, that uh, raise the uh, costs of the project to a point where um, it's not a financial, um, financially feasible for him to go forward with it. That's so. the second application that's for perhaps and just go forward. Yes. So. Unfortunately. Were those issues ones that are going to confront basically anybody that wants to yes. deal with the property? Yeah, so the right person has to yeah. have an interest in, in that property. Yeah, it is a big building. It was per it was it would have been perfect, I think, for this indoor car. I mean, that's that's what your regulations only permit in terms of those kind of yeah. uses. So it would have been it, it was all glass. So it would have been uh, a good fit for for him, so I don't think uh, that will be pursued, at least with this particular individual. So. What about the new path lot at the corner of North Street? That has, um, I was by there today, that has cleaned up for a while. He was encroaching on other properties and that uh, <coughs> has not been happening, so he finally got the message. He was going to come in with an application for the property next door. He has That has not materialized. I'm not sure why. Um, he may have decided now not to so pursue that. ZBA approved On the corner, yeah. well, you approved it as well, but they got a variance from CBA, so it wasn't all CBA's uh, no. approvals. So but well, Z CBA, CBA approved the next one down. Did too. they? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to remember. The next one down. Well, it's still the approved spot for this body. Correct. So okay. public dialogue. Anything? Well, Well, I think that's it then. Thank you for those staff reports. I'm looking for a motion. Unless anybody wants to keep talking. I'll move to adjourn. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Pulling oh, teeth. I <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed?